on to another adventure we go. Now we're going back to the Grand Bazaar, rendezvous with the others, and come up with a plan to crush the enemy. Yeah. But what are we going to do exactly? Let's watch and find out. All right, everyone is here. How did everything go? Any luck with your missions? Let's report back one by one. I'll start first. We've made the necessary modifications to the Akasha Terminal. In addition, the props required are also ready. I'll go next. The Traveler and I went to Party's DI. The situation was a bit complicated, but we found Tainari. Unfortunately, he was wounded during a fight. Who was behind it? Uh, well, that's the tough part. What should I say, Traveler? The Fatui or the Balladeer? Let's go with the Balladeer. <sighs> After some back and forth, we confirm that the doctor has left Sumeru by boat. He has something urgent to attend to back in Snezhnaya. So, we've successfully removed the doctor from the picture. Also, Tainari's already resting, so he'll be okay. Hmm. <laughs> Good. Oh! Tainari also asked us to tell you this message. Trust your own senses and experiences. <sighs> all right. I'll remember that. Everything also went smoothly on my side. The Aramites should have arrived at their destination by now. To avoid alerting the quarry, they will stay there for now. I can't believe you actually got so many Aramites into Sumeru City. It's all thanks to Ramon and his brave team, as well as their bold strategy. It appears to have been very effective. I'm glad to hear it. Well, is that everything? Okay, this meeting is adjourned. Huh? Wait, you mean that's it? Well, what else is there to discuss? Shouldn't you end with some words of encouragement? You know, to fire us up now? Personally, I'd rather we all go home and get some rest. Hmm... <sighs> I'll hate them, you... Ugh. Oh, and if you wanted someone to say something to that effect, then I must reiterate that I'm here to strategize and not to lead. So you should find someone more suitable to do that. But I thought all of you Academia Big Shots were great speakers. Then I should remind you that I'm the scribe. I know that. So what? The scribe is responsible for recording meetings, not speaking. Fine, whatever. Well, Sino doesn't seem to be much of a talker either. I guess that leaves it to my employer. Employer? Yep, the Traveler hired me. She asked for a smile at her payment. <laughs> That's right. So come on, boss. What do you have to say for the team? Yeah! Say something to boost morale! Hmm, let me think. Huh? What are you all doing here? Oh, it's Nehru! Hey, everyone. I'm not disturbing you, am I? Not at all. I was actually just about to go find you. <laughs> uh, judging from the group and all your serious faces, you were discussing something important, weren't you? But you also look like you're up to no good. <laughs> Seems pretty interesting. Welcome, Nilu. Would you like to join us? Huh? Join you? You mean... You also want to discuss something important... with me? Yes. Something very important. Nilu, are there any breaks in your performance schedule in the upcoming days? Huh? Wait, you're seriously inviting me? I can't believe my ears! You are truly the 
bravest and most passionate people of Sumeru, well, that I've ever met. Ahem. Oh, right. The Traveler and Paimon are not from Sumeru, but you are awesome as well. <laughs> That's right. I... I must admit that I'm a little scared. But I'll try my best for Lesser Lord Kusanali. If I can somehow use my abilities to help you, then count me in. Remember, believe in yourself. Okay, I'll get my friends at the Grand Bazaar to help us tomorrow. Just remember not to say too much. Be discreet. Yep, you got it. All the preparations are done. Now, can we finally conclude this meeting? Yeah. Tomorrow, we're going to save a god. So, have you thought up what you'd like to say, boss? It's hard to believe everything that has happened till now. And our actions will bring change to many things tomorrow. Yep, yep! It's a grand plan and we're all super awesome! That's right. So... Just get a good night's sleep, everyone. <laughs> well said. A good night's rest before an operation can be the difference between success and failure. Huh. Thankfully, I've had my place to myself recently. It's been nice and quiet. Uh-huh. Oh, um, nothing. All right, let's all go home and get a good night's sleep so we can be up early tomorrow. Okay, so I guess that means it's time to say good night now. you two. Sleep well? Uh, not really. Paimon got too nervous thinking about today and didn't fall asleep until the sun was almost up. What about you all, Haytham? Naturally, I slept just fine. After all, a good rest should be considered part of the plan, since energy is an important resource. Y you just want to show off how calm you are! It's crucial to dissipate any tension before we execute our plan. The only thing you're doing is being annoying! Anyway, do you need me to go over the game plan again? Yes, just in case. I want to confirm everything again. Our target is Grand Sage Azar's office. Everyone in the Academia knows that's where the Grand Sage's console is. Only they can operate it. Many restricted commands and operations are executed via that console. I'm sure that console has a way to free Lesser Lord Kusanali. You know, Paimon's been thinking, what kind of technology could let the sages imprison even a god? That isn't something they could have accomplished with their scholarly talents alone. In the Sanctuary of Surasthana, there's a device of Greater Lord Rukadevata's that she once used to isolate herself while meditating. 500 years ago, the Grand Sage at the time modified the device so that it could no longer be controlled from the inside. They were effectively trapping one god with the power of another. So, uh, how are we gonna get to the Grand Sage's office? Don't forget, today is Nyagarbaha Day. 
arguably the most important day to the academia. The Sages and Core Academia personnel are busy loading the latest batch of research developments and legal decrees into knowledge capsules so that they can be entered into the Akasha. All the Darshan's researchers have their noses to the grindstone, and the Academia's grounds are flowing with all sorts of people. It's the perfect time for an infiltration. When the Grand Sage leaves his office to supervise the entering process, that's our cue to access the console and free the Dendro Archon. When you put things that way, the plan feels a bit unrefined. Well, yes. That's just the visible side of our plan, after all. If precedence holds, the Academia should have already started preparing for Nyagarbaha Day. Everyone should be in position. All that's left is for us to lead the charge. Let's go. Uh, so are we just gonna walk in through the front door, or...? Yes. Were you expecting a stealthier approach? Uh, Paimon can't think of a good comeback. All right, it's all on all Hatham if things go south. Scribe? Please, wait. Are you Scribe Alhatham? <laughs> Calm down, Paimon. That's me. Is something the matter? I'm in a hurry. Uh, no. I was just surprised to see you here. I had heard that the sages were looking for you not long ago, but I didn't know what for. And, um, also... Please don't bring outside guests into the Academia. Outside guests? How did you arrive at such a conclusion? Your groundless inference shames the Haravatat Darshan. What? what did you say? I'm the top student in Haravatat, and I earned third place at the last Inter-Darshan debate. Don't look down on me! That wasn't my intention. As your Haravatat senior, I just assumed that you possessed a greater aptitude for critical thinking. Look, based on what you already know, the purpose of my return and the reason they're here should be obvious. Is that so? Wait a moment. Let me think. Don't tell me the answer. The sages search for you. A blonde-haired traveler. Outside guests. So, from the start, the sages weren't looking for you, but this traveler? And you were gone from the academia for so long because... Hey, shh. Yes, you've proven yourself as the top student in Haravatat. I surmise you've arrived at the correct conclusion. As I expected. Uh, please forgive me. I wasn't thinking clearly just now. Thank you for getting me back on track. It's nothing. We'll be on our way, then. All right. Thank you for your contributions to the Academia, Scribe. Uh, what the heck just happened now? What did he just guess? I'm afraid I don't know either. You have no idea? Mm-hmm. He convinced himself of whatever truth he came up with. That is the so-called pride of a scholar. If someone questions their academic facility, they will instantly feign understanding to keep up appearances. Nowadays, the academia is rampant with this type of scholar. Their obvious farces of intellect only serve to highlight themselves as fools. Wow, so there are special ways to deal with smart people. We don't even need to make up our own excuses. We shouldn't waste any more time. It would be problematic if we missed our window of opportunity. Let's go. We gotta hurry to the Grand Sage's office to get the console and song is for good. I just hope we don't get found. Is this the Academia's library?
Indeed. Known as the House of Dana, it is quite possibly the most extensive special collections library in Tevat. Uh, there are a lot of students going through here. Is it really okay just to waltz right in? The Academia marches to a fast beat, especially since it's Nyagarbaha Day. They're all occupied with their own matters. Just act natural. Now, hurry along. What's this platform for? It's a lift that Academia personnel use to access higher floors. Are we going to take it then? The Grand Sage's office is up there somewhere. No, not right now. We can't guarantee that we won't run into the Great Sage. Let's step back and observe for now. You think the Grand Sage will exit from there? And after he does, we'd sneak past him? Oh, Paimon thinks that's really dangerous. Who knows? However, if we can confirm Azar's current location, our operation will be much safer if we... Allow me to offer you a hint. If you wish to know his location, look behind you. Huh? Oh, busted. Do not tell me you believed the Academia would not grow suspicious of you after such a prolonged absence, scribe. An eyewitness had informed me of your whereabouts, so I came to personally welcome you. Great Sage, I didn't expect you to care so much about me. I'm truly flattered. I'm sure, but compared to you, I am far more interested in these two unexpected guests. You are the Traveler and Paimon, correct? It's a pity that only now have I been afforded the opportunity to formally meet two of Sumeru's most esteemed guests. I do apologize for my lack of decorum. Let's talk. Excellent. You immediately initiated discussion instead of attempting to prepare some perfunctory excuse. You clearly understand the situation at hand, and have no intention of making a reckless stand. The foot traffic here renders this place unsuitable for discussion. Please, follow me to my office. This place is crawling with guards. There's no way out for us. All right then, Traveler. What did you wish to discuss with me? Today is Niagarbaha Day, so I still have many responsibilities to attend to. There is little time for idle chit-chat before I detain you all. The Fatui are not to be trusted. Hmm. You seem to know quite a bit about our endeavors. If that is so, then you should be praising our great work, rather than using your trivial misgivings in a futile attempt to sway me. Trivial? Then tell me, what do the Fatui want from me? A gnosis? Maybe benefits of some kind. <laughs> worthless. Those are all completely worthless. Benefits, divine power. These materialistic words do nothing but debase our great work. Creating a god. Yes, we are using human wisdom to create a god. If humanity cannot attain omniscience and omnipotence, then we shall create a god to reveal them. This is the pinnacle of human wisdom. We shall regain a god's guidance at long last. No longer will we flounder in the interminable void of consciousness and knowledge. Even Ermin's soul will be freed from its plight. 
for our nation of scholars, this is the ultimate aspiration. No cost is too great to realize it. You say it's a pinnacle of human wisdom, but in the end, you're still relying on a god. You will never understand the rapture of having a god be born within your very hands. With your degree of knowledge, you cannot even comprehend such an emotion. What about Lesler Kusanali? It's not like Sumeru didn't already have a god of its own. Gods exist on a plane that far eclipses humanities. Lesser Lord Kusanali, what can she even do? Care for the people? Fend off sandstorms? Fabricate silly fairy tales? <laughs> These are but child's play for the academia. Does that make us equal to the gods? We are a people favored by Greater Lord Rukadevata. Though I may have personally not seen it, our forefathers bore witness to true wisdom. The ascension of the Lesser Lord has brought nothing but bewilderment to the scholars. They all ask, is that truly what true wisdom is supposed to look like? With that in mind, it is better to keep her isolated in the sanctuary of Suristhana, so our academy will not become embroiled in turmoil. What a pathetic justification! Do you really think that only the super smart or powerful should be able to call themselves gods? As per your judgment, Grand Sage, they are indeed dangerous individuals. Not only are they acting against the academia, but their ideologies have the potential to lead scholars astray. Looks like there really was merit in my assignment. Oh, Haytham? Are you talking about us? Anyway, I've brought them to the academia as ordered, but it took some time and trouble. Oh, that reminds me. Here is the investigation report you had requested. It's a summary of my time spent with the Traveler an array of information about her ready for your perusal. Oh, hey, Thumb! So you're... You're still on the academia side! We finally started to trust you! We've been set up. I'll oh, hate them, you... Excellent. Detailed contents with no errors. I would expect nothing less than an immaculate report from the scribe. As it is near Garba Day, I'll enter the information on you into the Akasha. Surely you know what that means. We'll be monitored, just like Sino. With the Akasha's calculation prowess, all of your actions will be predicted with an accuracy of at least 98%. Furthermore, your data will be updated in real time whenever new information presents itself. To put it into words you can understand, wherever you go, you will be walking under an invisible leash. This is Sumeru's greatest penalty for dishonest persons. When you say dishonest persons... Does that also include your General Mahamatra? Are you not familiar with the concept that great responsibility begets an equally great suspicion? So it turns out Al Haytham betrayed us. But is that really his plan? Anyways, thank you all for watching. Make sure to leave a like and also a comment. And if you also kind do so, make sure to also slap the subscribe button and also bell, because you wouldn't want to miss out on the next adventure. Something spicy is gonna happen. I hope. Anyways, thank you all again for watching, and we'll see you next time.